Hey everybody, welcome to Wild Care. It is Friday, happy pre-4th of July for you. And we have a very interesting show today that I am quite excited about. We're gonna learn a little bit more about how animals sleep. Of course, I'm here, I'm Allison, and I'm here with our ambassador program manager, Melissa. And we have two very special guests, of course, Marla, the Western Pond Turtle, and Kaylee, the American Kestrel. Melissa, what are we gonna learn about sleep today? Uh, so that's a question I get from a lot of people is how they sleep. And the generic answer is that they take a lot of naps. It just depends on the species. So we're gonna start by talking about uh, Marla, our Western Pond Turtle here. She is 41 years old. Really? Yes. That amazes yes. me every time. She looks better at 41 than I did. <laughs> uh, she came to us in 2015. Um, you can see there that her left front leg is missing its claw. I don't know how that happened. She came in that way. And she was actually a pet of a lady that she was taking care of her on her deck. Yeah, somebody um, had found her, I think, with that injured foot and assumed that she wouldn't be able to survive in the wild. And this was, of course, if she's 41, that means that was way back in the 70s before there was a lot of awareness of, of wildlife medicine and rehabilitation. So yeah, so she kept her as a pet, which of course you don't want to do no, no. in this day and age. But anyway, that's what Marla's situation was. And now she's here. And now she's here. And the way that reptile sleeps is very interesting. They actually do have REM sleep like we do. Okay. Does that mean they dream? They believe they dream. Okay. Um, um, they do uh, detect some neural activity during REM for okay. them. And our REM cycles usually last anywhere from 80 to 110 minutes. And we have about four to five of those a night. Okay. okay. Whereas reptiles, they have their rim cycles are 80 seconds. Oh, short. So throughout the whole entire day, they'll do 350 cycles um, of rim sleep at 80 seconds per cycle. And it's very interesting when this whole entire um, pandemic hit and we got to spend a lot more time with our ambassador animals, uh, we started noticing uh, different adaptations or behaviors and one of the things that Marla does or how she sleeps is she sleeps underwater okay um, she has a very uh, rock uh, just a I call it the special rock her little bed rock is what I call it uh -huh. um, super and comfortable super comfortable uh, she grabs onto it she holds onto it and she actually dips her head and she sleeps underwater and so she's doing that for about 80 seconds at a time and then she wakes up uh, does she and I'm sorry is she breathing during that or is her head underwater her head's underwater Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, so she does that and I, I catch her, she naps quite a quite a bit during the day, especially if we've uh, been taking her out in the courtyard here and she's pretty active. <laughs> so um, if you take her on a walk, she then uh, gets a little sleepy and yeah, has to take a nap? Yeah, I let her that's out in the courtyard um, earlier this week. And I mean, she was running around everywhere and the moment I put her right back into her enclosure inside, she went right to sleep. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. She's such a beautiful girl, look I at that know. face. Oh, and she's just so, good with the camera you know yes, she, she, she is she has no fear um, she is just a amazing uh, ambassador animal that we have here but that is just fascinating though that she's gonna sleep in those little tiny 80 In second 80 second you said 80 second Wow increments yeah and so she naps throughout the whole uh, 24 hour period throughout the day. So, but these guys are a little more active during the day, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she would be, and during the night, is she doing that same behavior of mm -hmm. 80 second? Yep. And then coming up for air, is that what it is? And then? Yep. Yep. And then uh, going back down underneath water, which is really amazing how, if you think about for us, how long our REM cycles are and how long it takes for us to get into REM. Right. And they're just able to do that. But that makes sense because if you want to be, um, alert for other predators right you know you've got to be just taking naps really quick you it's hard to protect yourself from a predator if you are sleeping solidly like that well and that's totally true no yeah. question about that and then Kaylee here is our American Kestrel um, he's nine years old but we're starting to think he's a little bit older than that mm. um, he's starting to get some uh, signs of aging he's got a cataract and he has a little bit more arthritis oh okay uh, the reason he came into us is because he was landing um, and on people's heads at picnic benches and being really friendly with them mm. which is not normal kestrel behavior right um, so California Fish and Wildlife uh, came and brought us to brought him to wild care and he can't be released back into the wild he's too familiar with humans sounds like somebody probably took him out of the wild, mm -hmm. kept him as a pet, and then he either escaped or they decided to let him go and it turns right. out he didn't have the instincts that he needed 
to survive on his own. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm going to jostle a little bit so I can get off my ankle. There we go. So, um, and you tell know, us about Kaylee sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what they do is they sleep on one foot. Oh. So the muscle in the leg forces the tendons in the foot to tighten, right? Hey, and Chris. they can lock down onto a perch. Okay. Lift one leg up. Take that beak, turn it right back behind. 180 degrees they can do. Okay. Right? To keep warm, and that's how they sleep. Ha! Huh. And so tell me again about the standing on one foot. The standing on one foot, um, so he puts all the weight on one foot. This foot goes up, right? The muscles uh, force the tendons in these talons here to grip on, to ratchet down. Okay. Right? So if he's taking his foot and he's keeping it up, right, he's keeping that foot warm. If he's turning his beak and he's tucking it behind his wings, he's also keeping his beak warm. So he's sure. trying to stay warm um, when he's sleeping as well. Yeah, you, you know, I've always wondered with birds how they don't fall out of the trees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a ratcheting system, so it locks in. Hi, let me back se. up while you do that. Show the ratcheting again. It, they just ratchet in. Ha! And they also do this when they grab prey, too. So every time they grab prey, and let's say if it, it twitches, right? you know, or it's going to ratchet down. And if it's going to twitch again, it's going to ratchet down until ah. the, the prey is um, expired. That makes perfect sense. Now, um, what about REM sleep for these guys? Um, for REM sleep for these guys, you know, I actually don't, don't I haven't found a study if okay. they do REM. Okay. Um, but he is part of the big falcon group. And what I think is really interesting is when we talk about the peregrine falcon, uh -huh. right? Um, the peregrine falcon along with dolphins, do this very uh, interesting sleep behavior called unihemispheric slow wave sleep. Okay. And what that means is that one part of their hemisphere of the brain sleeps while the other one's awake. Oh, so half of the brain is asleep and half of the brain is awake. Yeah, and then they alternate. All right, and why do they do that? They do that to um, be vigilant of predators, sure. but for the peregrine falcon, they can migrate all the way from Canada down to Argentina and um, Chile, and that's usually about 8,000, I want to say it's like 8,000 miles. That is a seriously long trip. It is a very long trip. Uh, Swainson's hawks also go down to Argentina as well. So when you have those long migrations and they're crossing those large bodies of water like the Gulf of Mexico and sure. the Caribbean Sea, um, they need to sleep and navigate, and they can both do that at the same time because of that unit hemispheric. Oh, that's just so interesting. Yeah, yeah, and uh, dolphins do that as well. And so what I read is that the one eye that's open, so if you have, so if their right eye is open, their left part of their brain is awake. Okay. And if their left eye is open, the right part, right? Oh, thank you, Victoria. Just oh, made a donation. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, that's really Okay, so it's opposite. It's yep. opposite, yep. which is really cool. Yep. And uh, they alternate every two hours between um, sleeping. Oh, so, every two hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So two hours on, shut down that hemisphere, another two hours. Um, it's a really great adaptation. That is a fabulous adaptation. Mm -hmm. Yes, so let's give it to everybody again. It's uni hemispheric, uni hemispheric sleep. Slow wave, slow wave sleep. sleep. Okay, uni hemispheric slow, slow wave, wave sleep. sleep. So I'm going to look that up because that is actually a term that I have not heard before. Yeah, yeah. I love doing these with you, Melissa. I learn something new you. every time. I know. I know. Um, it's, it's great because I get to study up on everything. Right. And so, you know, I always am trying to be very vigilant about what I say. You know, I want to make sure, because it said most birds, but you know, the thing I've learned about gathering information um, for Facebook Lives or for any um, lecture or program that I give to the public, there's always that one animal out there or a few animals that are the exception it to that. That happens to be the exception. Right, yes, right. Exactly, and somebody exactly. somewhere is an expert on a certain species. Yep, yep. And they're like, no, no, that doesn't actually happen. <laughs> um, in our courtyard, the animal that actually sleeps the most is the Virginia opossum. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And we didn't want to wake her up for this. We didn't want to wake yet. her up. She sleeps 19 hours, up to 19 <laughs> hours. Um, and then I think the one that sleeps the most that I found the was least? A, uh, no, the most the is most the koala is bear. Oh, is that the animal that sleeps the most? Okay. Yes, is uh, 22 hours. Oh. And the one that sleeps the least is the bullfrog. So they will close their eyes, but they're just resting. <laughs> so, um, which I do that too. I'm just resting. Just give just me five gonna minutes. Just rest my fine. eyes for a minute here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's really interesting. I, 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 I have no idea why the bullfrog would be the animal that would have the least sleep yeah. requirement. 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because they do do a hibernation. Yeah. So maybe it's like just a small window that they need to be awake to, you know, um, produce getting up and produce young, young and, and everything and all of like the rest. that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, they they uh, sleep the least, so they can go months for a time without sleeping. Huh. Think about what how much you could get done. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly, exactly. If you're a koala bear, you probably don't yeah, get a lot your done. Your to do list is probably pretty long. Pretty well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, I do. I think, it, you know, you, when, you, when you think about, especially birds, I mean, it kind of makes sense that Marla here, hi, Marla, let's say hello to you again, that Marla, she could be active. She could be doing things at night. She's mm -hmm. primarily diurnal. She's primarily active in the day, but she can be perfectly active at night. Mm -hmm. Somebody like Kayleigh up here, he is a diurnal bird. Yep. His, his eyes are not set up to be able to see in the mm -hmm. dark. Mm -hmm. he, his hearing is pretty good, but he doesn't have the ability to fly and navigate in the dark. And that's going to be true of most of the diurnal birds mm -hmm. in Wild Care's bird room. If you scroll up to Wednesday's video, you'll mm -hmm. see our video that we did in the bird room uh, the other day with our baby birds. Uh, the birds are fed every day from 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. So they're fed from dawn until dusk. And so, and when we're very lucky, the birds are fed approximately every half hour to mm -hmm. every 45 minutes. So it's a, it's, a, it's a huge number of feeds. And we're very lucky that we don't have to feed those wow. animals throughout the night. Imagine doing yeah. every, or the hummingbirds, our wonderful hummingbird volunteer uh, foster care team, feeds those babies every 20 minutes. I and imagine trying to do that through the night, but you don't have to because mm -hmm. these, these animals are active during the day. So during the night, Kayle here and, and all of his fe fellow diurnal brethren are going to be propped up on one leg, mm -hmm. right, with that foot ratcheted down so mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about falling off your limb mm -hmm. and, uh, and sleeping the night away until the dawn comes. I just think that's, I think that's interesting. And of course, owls are going to be the opposite. Yes. Because, yes. Or the, the, the nocturnal owls anyway, because they will be doing the sleeping at night. Um, uh, Faye says, I must have a koala bear DNA in me. I sleep a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They uh, birds are just all of our animals are amazing, but I think with the bird room is just so. I'm like, man, those are some tired parents. Oh, they can are you feeding them even every imagine minutes? how exhausting that would be? Well, yeah, and they're feeding constantly. You know, yeah. we, we're we're doing the every thirty minutes as a as a timing estimate of of basically the equivalent of con a constant stream of bugs one at a time when uh, when they're actually in the nest with their parents. It's just astonishing and it kestrels really can have up to um six babies so that's a lot for a kestrel oh my gosh well the parents work together right yes they do but oh my goodness i mean six babies i mean you would think that the bird this tiny you're like oh maybe one two right. babies but six for such a tiny little that is um, just fascinating but fierce little yep. raptor there which is definitely what he is they so. sure are well this has been fascinating Thank i you. love learning new things so much fun and we're gonna let our wonderful guests here Marla seems to be, I don't know what Marla is doing down there, but uh, she's probably going to take a walk in the courtyard later, yes, right? she will. Excellent. And we'll put Kayleigh back in his enclosure. I hope everyone knows we've had a few visitors come by asking if Wild Care is open, and unfortunately mm -hmm. we are not open to the public. I wish very much that we were. We sure miss having our visitors and our, our regular people coming into the courtyard, and our, I know our ambassador animals have, have noticed a difference. The question is whether mm -hmm. they like it or not. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, we sure miss seeing you guys, so we're really happy to be able to bring these. Again, we're doing these videos on Wednesdays and Fridays and, and often with our ambassador animals and or otherwise with, with patients in the wildlife hospital. So check us out on Facebook on Wednesdays and Fridays at 1 o'clock Pacific time. Mm -hmm. And I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday weekend. Stay safe, yes. stay well, wear your face mask, please. And we will see you next Wednesday. Thanks, everybody. Bye.